In this tutorial, I'm going to teach you about facial proportions. Proportions are like a ratio or a fraction, and we use them to compare parts of a whole. In this case, comparing perhaps one facial feature to another, or the distances between facial features. So to start off, I'm going to show you a really helpful tip, and that will be using our best tool in drawing, your pencil. So we're going to use our pencil actually like a ruler, and have the end of it and your finger be kind of a way of measuring for example, the size of certain features compared to one another, or comparing distances. So we use our pencil to help us because facial proportions are not the same for everybody. What I'm going to be showing you are some basic guidelines, but always keep in mind that everybody's face is laid out differently. So they might be very close to these facial proportions, or they might be pretty different, just depending on what we look like. So to finish out this video, I'm going to show you in a drawing how to lay out facial proportions, and then I'll finish it up with a time lapse of a self-portrait. So I'll probably spend about 20 to 30 minutes on the picture, but we'll speed it up so it goes by pretty quickly. So let's get started. To start our drawing, we're going to begin by drawing the head. And instead of drawing a circle, it's mostly like an egg shape, but an upside down egg. So don't worry about being perfect just yet at this point. We can refine everything later. Next, I want you to divide the head in half, horizontally and vertically. And remember, draw it light until you get it right. We're going to be erasing almost all of these lines, so it's very important that we draw them lightly so that we don't have big lines dividing up our face on a final portrait. So that tool that I had to show you with the pencil, we can use that to check our division to make sure everything is actually in half, which it looks good. So we're going to move on and I'm going to tell you a little bit about these lines. So obviously we're symmetrical. So if we divide our face in half, generally we're going to be the same on both sides. Now we have this line dividing the head in half. And I think many people who are new to portraits generally like to think that this is where your nose goes. But in fact, that's actually where your eyes go because this up here is the way top of your head. This isn't your forehead up here, that's the crown of your head, so the highest point you can see when you're looking straight ahead. So if you don't believe me, why don't you use your pencil and try it out for yourself. Next what we're going to do is divide the area between the eyes and the chin into thirds. So when you get to this point, you don't need to draw a line all the way across. You can just make little tick marks. It's less to erase. So um, this line right here would be the bottom of your nose. And then this line here would be the bottom of your lower lip. So not the middle of the lips, but the bottom of the lower lip. Now, for some people, the bottom of the nose may be halfway in between the eyes and the chin. On me, however, like I have a smaller nose, so my nose is only about a third of the way between my eyes and my chin. Um, it's important to be thinking about how your face is laid out, so this might be different. So you might have your nose halfway between here, and then your lips are halfway between your nose and your chin. Um, so just depending on your anatomy or whomever you're drawing, it's going to be just a little bit different. So these are the basic guidelines here. Um, next up, we want to figure out where the ears are. So generally, unless if you're elderly or have gauged ears, your earlobes line up with the bottom of your nose and then the tops of your ears line up around your eyebrows. Again, that depends on how big your eyebrows are or if they're up really high or really low. So this is just a general guideline. 
Now we're going to start going across the face. So I want you to measure the width of your eye. So use your pencil, measure the width of your eye, and then I want you to take that same measurement and move it in between your eyes. What do you notice? Well, our eyes are about one eye width apart. And if we really figure it out, our eyes are actually, you can fit five eye widths across the face. So I'm going to put that one eye width in the middle. because so They're one eye width apart. And then we have an eye width where our eyes actually go. And then we should have an eye width on either side of the face. It's going to take some practice, but you know, the more you do it, the better you get, and the more you can eyeball it. But it is very important that you get the right width of the eyes on the face, because we generally have a tendency to make our eyes really big, because that's the feature that most people tend to focus on. So by doing this to get started, you're ensuring that your eyes are the correct size. Next up, we want to figure out how wide our nose is. So if you were to hold your pencil straight up on either side of your nose, it should line up with the corner of your eye. So if we were to draw these lines down right here, that is about how wide your nose is. So that also tells us that our nose is one eye width wide. Now let's talk about the mouth. So remember, this is the bottom of the lower lip. So the actual center of the lips would be up just a little bit higher. And we want to figure out where our mouth ends, where the corners of the mouth are. So if you were to hold your pencil up from the corner of your mouth and measure, generally it is either on the inside edge of your iris, which would be the colored part of your eye, or it lines up with your pupil. And again, this just depends on your own features. So for example, I have kind of a small mouth, so my mouth lines up with the inside edge of the iris. And obviously if you're smiling or making an angry face, the size of your mouth is going to change, definitely. What we're going to do next is talk about the jawline a little bit because that is important and it helps us figure out where the rest of our features go. So um, usually around our eyebrows is kind of where our temple is, and then our cheekbones are just kind of slightly below our eyes. And obviously face shapes are very different depending on the person. So you could have a rounder face, you could have a very angular face, and if you're male or female that also makes a big difference. So how strong is your jawline? So next up we have our neck, and usually our neck kind of begins right around our jawline if you're looking straight ahead. Obviously if you are a weightlifter, your neck's going to be quite a bit larger, but, and then also between male and female, so generally females' necks are a little slimmer, a little more curvy, whereas men's necks are a little more straight. Um, so the key thing is to, you know, not have like a skinny little cartoon neck. You want some, some meat on there because it's got to hold up your head. Your head's seven pounds, so you need some muscle in there. And then kind of right around here is where we see the trapezius muscle. And obviously, like if you lift weights, this is going to be quite a bit larger. Um, but it's just important to remember that your shoulders don't just go straight across. There's kind of a gentle slope between your neck and your shoulders. So before I get too far in this area, we want to think about how wide our shoulders are. So most people would want to just kind of end right here if they're just starting out. But your shoulders are quite a bit larger than that. Your shoulders are actually two sideways head widths wide. So, if we were to take our head and just imagine there weren't a neck there, if we were to turn it sideways and turn it sideways again, that would be about the width of our shoulders. So it's a bit larger than what most people think. 
so we can use our pencil to measure. And then from here, all we have left to kind of figure out is where our hairline goes. And this is different for everybody, obviously. Like if you are bald or if you have a lot of hair, it's always very different. So um, I don't have a very extraordinary forehead. So I'm just going to kind of draw in where my hairline is. And one thing I see a lot when I'm teaching is, um, say we have our ears in here. You aren't really going to see too much of the ears when you're looking straight ahead. So just a little bit of ear. What I notice is, especially on people with short hair, they don't tend to draw the hair in front of the ears. So their hair tends to go straight across right here. So um, always keep in mind like what kind of hair you have in front of your ears. So don't ignore that, otherwise it starts to look like you have a really funky bowl cut. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to speed things up and erase these lines and I'm going to do a quick time lapse of a self-portrait. <laughs> 